Good evening, y'all, and welcome back to the kitchen. We had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. April and her family came up. Well, actually, April and the three kids came early in the day, and she and Lauren um, helped me prepare our Thanksgiving meal, and those youngins call it a feast. We had a little bit of everything. We had, we don't do turkey. We had ham and chicken and dressing, chicken and dumplings, potato salad, fresh green beans, bacon wrapped green beans, uh, pink stuff, and I have a recipe for that, and how I cook my green beans, there's a recipe for that. Uh, what else did we have? We had more food than collard greens, uh, candied yams, and I'm forgetting some stuff, but we had, I told you a ham, didn't I? We had more food. I sent a box full of stuff home with her, and we've still got leftovers. We had, April made the most wonderful trifle, and I'm going to get her to come and make one and let me video it. She makes her own pie filling for it, and it is just delicious. It was chocolate on top of that. And I made pecan pie, and what else did we have sweet? Oh, we call it Cheerio Cream Cheese Pie. It's the cream cheese with Eagle Brand and lemon juice, and then you top it, you put it in a graham cracker crust to top it. We had plenty of food, y'all, and we enjoyed every bit of it. And we have some leftover chicken. I went to the store, and they had leg quarters, 29 cents a pound, and it was a good name brand. Sometimes I don't like just the market stuff like that, because to me it smells like a wet chicken, and it's not real, it's just not... I don't think it's the best quality, but this was a name brand at 29 cents a pound. So for two dollars and ninety cents, I got that those leg quarters that I put two or three chicken breasts in with it and boiled every bit of it and deboned it and made my dressing and my dumplings and I had leftover meat. So I'm going to use my leftover chicken. But if y'all have leftover turkey from your Thanksgiving turkey and you're thinking, what am I going to do with it? You can either freeze it and make this later, or you can make it before you decide to freeze the rest of it. But it's a good recipe to have on hand if you have frozen some chicken or turkey and somebody calls and says they're going to drop by. If you don't have all the ingredients, you could leave one or two of these out and it'll still be yummy. But we're going to make a chicken salad pie, which could also be a turkey salad pie. You could also cook a pork loin and chop it into small pieces and put that meat in here. It's very good. Now I'm going to show y'all a little trick that I do sometimes when I'm going to make a savory pie. And I work smarter, not harder. So I'm using bought pie crust. And I'm going to roll one of them out. But when I make a savory pie, before I roll it a little bit bigger where to fit my pan better, I put a little onion and garlic powder on it. And maybe some black pepper. I know y'all can't believe that. <laughs> But I do, and it just adds some flavor, and I just like to do it. So I'm going to bring the camera over to the cabinet where I'll be rolling it a little thinner and pressing that seasoning down in it. Y'all can talk to me while I do that. Okay, I went ahead and cracked me a little bit of black pepper on there. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of onion powder. Not a whole lot, but I want a little bit all the way around. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of garlic powder. And this, of course, is granulated garlic and granulated onion. That's what I use. I get these big old things at Sam's. The Tones. No, this is Member's Mark. And then this one, I can either get the granulated garlic at, at Costco or uh, Sam's, either one. But I can only get this at Sam's. They only have powdered onion powder at Costco. Now, see, when I'm rolling this, I'm trying to press that into my crust. And trying to get that a little bit bigger so I can put it in this pan. Well, I tore it, didn't I? Now, I, this doesn't have enough for me to make it very pretty, but I'm just going to creep it a little bit around the edges where it kind of look like a pie. 
and this when you put your stuff into it with the crush raw I have baked it a little bit prior to before doesn't make any difference it still turns out good either way so now I've got my crust in here make sure it's in the edges got my seasoning pressed into it now we'll get back over here and I'll tell y'all what else we're gonna put in it before we bake okay, it. Okay the first thing that we're gonna need to do is uh, we have a half a cup of celery diced and half a cup of onion and I need to put it I have melted two tablespoons of butter in the little skillet and I'm gonna uh, turn the fire back on under it and I'm gonna just saute the celery and the onions until they're tender, not caramelized. So let me get them in this skillet over here. And I'll just toss them in that butter so they'll all have a little bit of butter on them. already toasted a half a cup of almonds, little slivered almonds, and I've got them toasted. And we're fixing to get a bowl and start stirring everything together and we'll add our vegetables when they get uh, tender. Okay, we're going to need to add three cups of chopped chicken, turkey, or pork loin, whichever you prefer. And into that we're going to add a half of a cup of mayonnaise. And we're going to stir this as we go along because we sure don't want them to burn. And I'm going to run over here and get the June oven heating. those bacon wrapped green beans yesterday and I kind of pre-cooked the bacon a little bit. It was still real limp but it cooked some of the, the fat out of it and they weren't as greasy and I really like that. So if you decide to make them, you might try that. I'm also going to add a half a cup of sour cream to this. That makes anything good, don't it? I've got two tablespoons of lemon juice and one fourth of a teaspoon of paprika. And I used smoky paprika. We're going to use one can of cream of chicken soup. Now I saw some soup the other day and I almost used it for this. Cream of jalapeno. They had it at HEB. And I bought some of that and I've got the cream of bacon that I haven't used yet. So one of these days I'm going to do a recipe and use all that good stuff. Calls for one small can drained of diced water chestnuts, or you can get the regular ones and dice them up yourself. Just add some crunch to it. I'm going to give this a quick stir, and then there's a few more goodies that has to go in it besides our celery and onions. This would be good to, on purpose, put some of your turkey up, and then if you ladies were going to have some friends over. It's the same concept as a quiche, only so much better. And you would have something really yummy to serve with a salad at a little luncheon. It's good that it carries and travels good. So this is just another one of those good ones that you need to put in your little file and use. And you know, you can tell when you get this all stirred up because that paprika kind of evenly colors it a little bit pink. And I was having some dark places in mine, so that meant that I hadn't done my job very well. So I'm trying to make a 100, so I'm stirring it real good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my almonds. Get them kind of stirred in. I have another chicken casserole that has almonds in it, and we love it. It's one of April's favorites. So I know that almonds in this are going to remind me of that other good one. I forgot about it, chicken almonds. 
and I toasted them in my June oven. I just put them in there, punch the button, and they toast in seven minutes. They're perfect. Well, this is still a little bit crunchy, and I want it tender in there. I'm going to cook it just another jiffy, and then we'll, we'll get everything finished up. The last thing I'm going to add after I add the celery and onions is one and a half cups of uh, shredded cheddar so cheese. So let me get my pepper blender, and I'm just going to grind some black pepper. The more, the better. It doesn't give an amount because I don't measure. I can usually put it in, but if you want to measure and you're not a big fan of black pepper, my oven is warmed and ready. You might put about a fourth of a teaspoon. But I like to smell it and taste it, so I'm probably not the one to tell you exactly how much to put. And I'm just going to put just a little bit of salt. Because your soup and your cheese has salt in it. So I'm going to use about a fourth teaspoon of salt just in case it needs a little extra. The other day my granddaughter was here and she said, hey, you know that that's a fourth or a half or a teaspoon. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, let me pour it in my hand and we'll get the measured spoons and we'll measure it. Let me tell y'all what, the one that needed two teaspoons was exact. Every time we scooped it up out of my hand, and she said, how do you do that? I said, well, when you've done something for 50 years, if you don't get good at it, something's wrong with you. So I've been practicing a long time guesstimating my measurements. I want some more pepper. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add this. If it's not really, really, really soft, I'll be okay with it because I like crunch. Troy's not, he don't like crunch a whole lot, but I don't think he likes this a whole lot anyway. So let me get that mixed in. Smells good. When you, when you heat onions, they say at the fair, if people with those booths aren't getting the business that they want, They'll just throw some onions on that grill and that smell goes to wafting through the air and it turns on people's hunger button and, and people start migrating toward the smell. Well, I can believe that because when I start cooking onions, it just smells like something good to eat's about to happen. Okay, I'm going to put uh, <clears throat> one and a half cups of, of grated cheddar cheese. And again, I work smarter, not harder. That was done for me already. Now, you could put this in the pie shell like I'm going to do. You could take wontons and put them in a cookie sheet, uh, I mean in a muffin tin, and put you a couple of tablespoons of this in it and then top it with a little bit of cheese too. You could make miniature uh, individual little pies with it. There's just a whole lot that you could do besides just make a regular quiche type chicken salad pie because the filling is what's yummy. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to get my little spoon and taste. Make sure the salt and pepper is right. That's very good. Okay, let me get my pie crust. And see, the crust is going to have that little bit of flavor on it. It's all going to be so good. Let me get over here where y'all can see. That don't look like leftovers, does it? That looks good. And nobody has to know that it was made from your leftover turkey or chicken. If you plan ahead on stuff, even on a weekday when it hadn't been 
Thanksgiving or a holiday and you're going to be boiling chicken and later in the week your cousin's coming by or mama's coming over or whatever the reason and you're going to need something to serve them, we'll boil an extra couple of chicken breasts and you make this casserole. Well, I'm going to get this into an oven that's heated to 375 degrees. And it's going to take it 45 minutes to cook, but if I was in something that hot, I think I'd cook a little quicker. But I'll bring y'all back when it's done and show you what it looks like. And I'm going to taste of it because it just, it just smells too good to not taste of it. It'll have to cool before we can taste it. But anyway, we'll be back in just a few minutes and show y'all a finished product. And it's going to be something you want to make. Okay, I've got it in the oven. hope you can see it. Fix to shut the door and set my timer for 45 minutes. And it'll be counting down. I'll bring y'all back in a little bit. Okay, here's our pie out of the oven. And I'm going to let it cool. See, it looks almost like a quiche. But I'm going to let it cool and cut a slice and show y'all. Make you want some of it. Well, the chicken salad pie cooked in 45 minutes exactly. And um, it's absolutely delicious. You've got a, you know how sour cream gives something a little bit of tart? Uh, and then a little bit of crunch from the water chestnuts and the flavor from the onions and celery. This is a keeper, y'all. Try it with your turkey or try it with chicken. You could use canned chicken in a pinch and make it, and it would be yummy. So now you have another good go-to recipe that's not hard. And if you didn't have water chestnuts, it'd be just as good with everything else in it. They just give it a little crunch, make it a little special. You know, when somebody says, what's in here? And you say, well, chicken and... I know it has water chestnuts in it, and see, that's something special that everybody don't use, and it might make you shine that day, so keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to go think up something else to cook for y'all, because I skipped Thanksgiving Day, because I was just busy with my family. So, we'll have some good stuff coming up, and I'll try to stick a few extras in for you. I'm fixed to get started on Christmas goodies, and they'll come pretty regular, so y'all have time to make them for your Christmas bar. Christmas time, this bar back here is just full of cookies and candy. Like, we need it, but you know what? It's a family tradition, and we're going to do it as long as I'm able, whether we need it or not. The kids look forward to it. Big kids and little kids. And the ups man, he can't wait every year for my bar to get full of goodies where he can dash in here and fix him a plate. Making memories, that's what makes life sweet and wonderful. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. Take care of yourself. Be putting a little bit of extra stuff back so that you can have it to fall back on no matter what happens. And if nothing happens, you just have one less trip to the grocery store or several less trips to the grocery store. I'll see y'all in a day or two something really good.